Okay, hello everybody. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So, um, my name is uh, Paul Cooper. I'm the VP for Europe for Litmos. Excuse me, I just put the coffee on the floor. Uh, our stand is there. Litmos is now part of SAP. And uh, I'm joined today by one of our customers, David Drysdale from Receipt Bank. Uh, David's been a customer for many years now. So I've asked him to come along uh, today and talk to you about how they've accelerated learning in Receipt Bank. So first of all, David, want to tell us a little bit about who Receipt Bank are? Oh, thanks, Paul. I just noticed that we are actually the wrong way around on that slide. Um, I was over there, but I'm over here now. Um, so uh, just a bit about Receipt Bank. So um, Paul said we've used Litmos for a number of years. Uh, about three years, uh, I think we think, uh, these days. Receipt Bank's only been around since 2010, so it's actually the majority of, um, well not the majority, but quite a large part um, of our company life cycle so far. So in a nutshell, Receipt Bank is a bookkeeping and accounting productivity tool that helps to um, automate the data extraction and handling of bills and invoices for small businesses and for their accountants. We have, um, yep, yep, and we use that data to leverage um, additional value for uh, our customers' relationships. Now where uh, Litmos comes into our story uh, at Receipt Bank is, let's just move back to that previous slide please, Paul. Thank you. So um, this is just a few stats about where Receipt Bank is as a company. So um, we've only been around, to say, since 2010. Um, we are based here in London, uh, but in the last few years, we've seen a phenomenal amount of growth from uh, to 5,000 accountants we handle worldwide, which is over 100,000 small businesses. And we're processing uh, 4 million uh, transactions a month, so invoices and receipts we're receiving from our customers which if you are an accountant is, is, is uh, insane, it's huge. But we have, um, with that, a net promoter score of 58. So I'm not sure how familiar everybody is with NPS scores. Um, so the work, best companies in the world are at sort of 60 and 70, so 58 is pretty good. Now, where Litmos fits, fits into that has really been crucial in helping us getting to, to this point. So. Several years ago, um, we were a small company where there was 10 of us sitting around a single table uh, just down the road, actually near South Ken Tube Station. We realized what we were doing with our customers was spending the first two, three, four hours of every customer life cycle walking them through how to use our product, the thought leadership that was required to make the most of our product. And we thought, actually, this is not the way to run a business, really. It's not the way to run a customer success strategy. It's not the way to run a customer experience strategy. And more importantly, if we were spending four hours doing that for every single customer, how are we gonna do it when we had a thousand customers, let alone when we had 5,000 customers, 100,000 customers? We realized something needed to change and we thought the best way to do that is with an LMS system. So what we do, uh, at Receipt Bank as a tech company is we think why should we do something that somebody else has already done much much better than we could possibly uh, hope to achieve. So we now work in a uh, SaaS marketplace, the software as a service marketplace where gone are the people who are the uh, jack of all trades, master of, of none. So we looked at how do we do customer education ourselves? And we thought, well, what do we do to get us to those 5,000 clients now, but for uh, 40,000 clients, a million small businesses, what do we need to do that? Um, and one of the things that popped out of us was Litmos with the LMS system, uh, because it allows us to take the content that we were already doing, so we did a lot of webinars, we did a lot of uh, PDFs and white papers, and it allows us to quickly and agilely stick those in um, a really cohesive and easy to follow course with assessments 
that allows us to track our users' uh, experience, our users' interaction with the software, and allows us to drive them to that throughout their uh, journey with us. Now, um, can you just move to the next slide, Paul, I think is the one I'm looking for. Yeah. So, what we saw very quickly was all the different benefits that this would bring us to our customers. So we currently have, I think, um, poof, I think 15,000 active users every month on our platform, and we do a lot of deep diving into the data on what our uh, what our users are doing and what we've done as a company to help them be successful. And those who have interacted with the training content that we're hosting on Lemus and constantly iterating and improving upon is they are logging into our product 50% more often than those who have never done any training. They have a net promoter score 18 points higher than, uh, than those who haven't, which in NPS terms is an enormous deal. That's crazy. Um, that means that they are far more likely to um, recommend us to their friends, to their colleagues, to people they know in their industries. Most importantly, it means that their churn risk is reduced, which means that putting all that, um, taking all that effort away from our sales team and uh, all the four hours that they were spending training them and putting that in a scalable format means that the customers who they would normally be speaking to are actually gonna stick around with us longer and be better advocates for us whilst also freeing up our sales team to focus on the other aspects of um, the other aspects of, of their roles and the other aspects that you have in a sales organization. Now, the way that we use Limos, only half of it is really the customer education. So uh, the customer education was our uh, gateway drug, I suppose, into, into Limos and the LMS uh, system, as that was the need that we had uh, there and then. Now, as I was saying to, to Paul the other day, not only at Receipt Bank do we look at the systems who can provide the, the best in show uh, solution, but we also look what is the software, what is the system, what is the ecosystem that will allow us to um, scale and grow the most as a company. So when we brought on Litmos, we had um, I don't know, 20 people worldwide in our internal organization, 800 customers. We thought, well, with our customers, we see that this is how we're going to grow this to yeah, 100,000 customers, a million customers, whatever number we want to we want to think of. Um, but also, from an internal organisation, we could see that it was going to support us all the way to to that in terms of internal manpower as well. So we now um, use Litmos Heroes at Receipt Bank as well. Um, we now have 300 members of staff worldwide based in the UK, South Africa, America, Australia, uh, and Eastern Europe. And what we found when we started using Litmos Heroes was from, I think, the moment that the uh, sign-off from finance came through that we could go ahead with, with our plans. I think it was the next day that we'd sent out emails to everybody in the company, everybody was set up on their GDPR training, and three days later, 75% of those staff were GDPR compliant. And that is really sort of the wow moment for our, for our people team. They came in with a brand new internal uh, curriculum and could immediately say at the end of that first week, we've made a big difference towards being compliant. And also, crucially, we've made awareness in our company of what we are doing to support our internal staff grow uh, in, their, uh, in their careers and as people as well. That's great, David. Um, in terms of accelerated learning, what does accelerated learning mean to you in terms of uh, what were you able to do quickly by using Litmos? So that covers quite a few different things, I think, for us. So from uh, an internal perspective, it means that using Litmos Heroes, we have this fantastic content straight out of the, the box that covers so many different aspects of um, our industry, of our business, of what our staff are looking to uh, to achieve. But this, the systems that are in place within Litmos to create your own content 
are dead straightforward as well and allowed us to leverage a lot of the content we already have. So anything that we had that was a PDF or a slideshow or a welcome webinar can really easily and quickly be uploaded onto Litmos, uh, be able to track user interaction with it and uh, understand if they are seeing the learning outcomes through, uh, through assessments. It also allows you to very easily and quickly iterate on that content. So you can see through the reporting engine how many people are stumbling on this question, how many people aren't watching this video the whole way through, what do I need to do today, this week, that can help make that uh, much better. And again, it's just a couple of clicks to, to upload that. And can you tell us a little bit about your IT infrastructure at Receipt Bank, uh, and particularly how quickly you were able to integrate Litmos to other systems? So, um, similar to, to what I was saying earlier about Litmos, from day one, uh, the co-founders at Receipt Bank said, we need a CRM system. And somebody said, well, why use a CRM system? Let's use spreadsheets. You know, so we've got 10 names of people that we can sell to. Why do we need a CRM system? So no, we need Salesforce. So from days one, we bought Salesforce. Um, and that's been a, a similar view that we've had at Receipt Bank since day one. I think at the last count, we had about 200 pieces of software that we use on a day-to-day -day basis at our company. And Litmos fits seamlessly into that. So we work very closely with uh, the fantastic onboarding and support team at Litmos with their Salesforce integration, which takes just a matter of moments to set up. It allows us to monitor our sales team's performance based on how they interact with our Litmos content, but it also allows us to monitor how our customers interact on a sales basis. Um, and that takes minutes, minutes to set up, um, it's something that we're starting to automate as well, even more. And that's just so we can save an extra 30 seconds here and there, like out of the box, it's, it's fantastic. Okay, that's really interesting. So, um, what also, uh, th this I think this last slide's quite useful because um, obviously you would have done some things differently had you done it all again. And so I think if you can share with the audience here what lessons you learned, uh, that would be very useful. So, a big thing, really, well, it's the thing big from day one. Don't start thinking, well, we'll roll it out to one team, or, well, maybe we'll, we'll use it here for six months, and then we'll see if it works everywhere else, or, well, we'll, we'll look at it for just GDPR. Don't, there's no point thinking, uh, thinking uh, about that. If you, what we kind of wish that we'd done from day one was think, what are all the different areas of the, the business that we can impact with training, sort of break out from, um, well, my role is customer education, but how could I break out from customer education into learning development for our staff, or vice versa? And I suppose a big part of that is thinking from the beginning, what are all the different success metrics? So if you're thinking, well, are people GDPR compliant? Have they done this course? Is that, are we successful that they've done this course? It depends what your goals are. But learning and development across customers, across your staff, covers so many different aspects. How do your customers feel about interacting with the staff who have completed uh, this course? How do your staff feel that they can speak to, to um, uh, to others in the industry or to their own customers uh, about their roles and about what's, um, what's coming up. How does that impact on recurring revenue? How does that impact on churn? So all these different aspects that I know we're very British and we don't want to put our hands up and say, I did that, that's my, you know, that's my win. Um, I'm, but this has been my, my experience. And sort of similarly coming on for that, um, we, as I said, from, from day one, we thought we want a piece of software that will help us get to, um, get to sort of the, where the rocket ship is heading, I suppose. But what we didn't think about until a bit later on was um, how does this work at scale? And whether that is, how am I suddenly supposed to try and get this out to 50,000 customers? How am I supposed to automatically get that out? 
or how do we work on this from a team level? What structures do we need either within uh, the, the company or within our tech infrastructure to help facilitate that process, um, which has been a couple of uh, growing pains for us, but we wish, kind of wish we planned for a bit earlier on. Okay, thank you very much indeed. So, um, <laughs> any questions for David? Um, that lights were, it's, it's incredibly loud, noisy here, I, can, I know, but does anyone have any questions they want to ask? Yeah, pretty, it's pretty noisy here, isn't it? But David's available. Also, Jane is another of our customers on the back row there. She works for another software company. Um, but, and our stand is over here. So thank you very much, David, for sharing with us um, how you, at Receipt Bank, thought big from the beginning, uh, identified tools that would help you grow massively, uh, thought about scalability. And thank you for sharing with us uh, how Litmos enabled you to accelerate learning uh, externally and internally, and how by adding Litmos Heroes content, you were able to very quickly, uh, again, uh, bring some significant results, uh, especially in this case about GDPR, which is the flavor of the moment. Yeah. Thank you once again, David. I appreciate your time today. Uh, thank you.